This Arduino Nano Every is wired to four of my LEDs here. This LED is blinking every 100 milliseconds, this one every 300 milliseconds, this one every 500, and this one every 1000 or one second. And over here, every three seconds, I show a count of how many times LED one has flashed, how many LED two has flashed, LED three and LED four and so on. This is the messy way of writing the code to do all that, keeping track of all of these counters and the time delay between each one. And this is a much better and cleaner and more intuitive way of doing it. So let's have a look at this thing called PKE timer. So just about every Arduino project that I've done is my fruit machine project here playing away. There are loads of timers going on in this project. I'm doing all kinds of counters and time delays for this kind of flashing, the switch debounce that I, I ignore any kind of presses that occur within, I don't know, 100 second, milliseconds or 200 milliseconds. Oh, and it gets a right old mess trying to keep track of that. So. I came up with a much better way, much cleaner way of handling all of that. And it's become the most used library that I have, actually. So let's have a look at it. So first of all, let's look at the more traditional way of handling timers. So here's the horrible code, if you like. And at the beginning here, I just set up the pin modes for each of the outputs that are driving the LEDs. But then, of course, you've got to start recording the time delays. So you have to record what the time is now when you started in, in the millis count, and then you record that against each of your counters. And when you reach a certain condition, i.e. is now minus the last time I recorded more than 100 milliseconds, that's for the first LED, or more than 300 milliseconds, that's the second LED, then I do something. So in this instance, I'm flashing LEDs, but it might be the debounce on the switch, it might be any kind of thing that you've got going on in your, in your project. You'll change the state. I'm increasing the counter here because I want to know how many times that has gone on or off or, or a button that's been pressed or whatever. <clears throat> and then I have to re-record and reset my last change state to what the time is now. And I have to do that for every one. That's a right pain. And although this code is fairly simple, it can get more and more cumbersome as you, as you use timers for different things and more of them. And that's why I came up with this PKE timer library several years ago, and it's become my most widely used library when I'm doing Arduino-based projects. So the idea behind this is you just set up your timer variables using this PKE timer class, and then in brackets, you set how many milliseconds you want each one to be. So over here, I've got LED one flash, that needs to be 100 milliseconds. LED2 flash is 300, LED3 flash is 500, 1000, and then I got the show count. That's, you know, it shows on the, on the serial output monitor every three seconds, the counters, okay? And then you can see straight away, look, it's much cleaner and much more intuitive. If LED1 flash dot is time up, so in other words, if I've reached 100 milliseconds from when I initiated it, then this becomes true. Then I've then I toggle the LED state and I don't have to worry about resetting the counter or the time or anything like that or incrementing a counter. It does it for me inside this library. So my code becomes much simpler, much easier to follow. Then here's my show count is time up. So that's every, let's define here as three seconds or 3000 milliseconds. So if that gets reached, then I show the, on the serial monitor the current counts. And here you can see it's got an internal variable called end count, and you can return that by doing that kind of statement, LED1 flash dot end count, okay? So let's just go through the all of the functions of the library. It's, it's very simple, very compact. I will share it in the description below, and you can use it as you desire, okay? Okay, here's the library. As I said, I will create a link in the description below. It will be from my PK Electronics OneDrive account, because I haven't set my GitHub up yet uh, some if you're watching this video in the future then i may well have done and i may have changed the description in the below but either way you should be able to download it and all you need to do is in your library folder wherever that is in your arduino software 
is just create a folder called PKAE underscore timer and copy these files into it, okay? It might be the default Arduino library or you might have created a designated location yourself. In the library folder, you'll find this readme.txt. So let's just take a quick look at that. Okay, so just taking a quick look at this readme.txt then, here's a brief description of what the library does. Then you've got the constructor, the most important bit probably. So all you need to do is put pka time underscore timer, then give a name that you want to refer to it as. So I've got in this instance, flash underscore LED. And then in brackets here, you pass how many milliseconds you want that timer to go off each time. So 500 being 500 milliseconds or half a second. So it says here, the above line defines the timer instance called flash underscore LED, and the delay is set to 500 milliseconds. The countdown starts the moment the instance is created. Right, so as soon as that line is executed in your code, that's it, the timer's started, okay? So your 500 milliseconds is already now ticking away. And then later on in your code, you can determine if it's been reached by putting this, as we saw in the example code I gave. So if flash underscore LED dot is time up, open brackets, close brackets, that will return true if it has been reached or of course false if it hasn't. Then you can put whatever you like in your code to activate, turn an LED on, turn an LED off or whatever in your code between these curly brackets. So brilliant, it's much simpler. Now, if you wanted for whatever reason, and I have done this in the past, but I can't think of a good example, but if you wanted to determine if a alternative duration has been reached, for example here, if it's halfway of its 500 milliseconds, you can pass a sort of dynamic value in the brackets there. So if flash underscore LED dot is time up, open brackets 250, close brackets, then if it's reached 250, then exactly the same thing occurs. It will return true, it will reset all the counters internally, increment the, sorry, increment the counter, in, reset the timers internally, and yeah, it, you would then execute the code between the, the curly brackets again. If you didn't want the timers to be reset, you just want it to carry on ticking away. In other words, it will never, it will never trigger again because you haven't reset the clock back. So in that instance, you can pass another optional parameter, which is a Boolean parameter in this instance. So if you pass false, it won't reset it. So the default is true. So if you pass false, it won't reset it and it won't trigger again. But you can manually reset it this way. So if flash underscore, sorry, not if, so flash underscore LED dot reset, open brackets, close brackets, that will then reset the function. It's just like you recreated it effectively. So the clock starts ticking straight away. Then you've got some uh, member variables. So one I used in the example code is n count. So the way you'd return that is by that kind of expression. So flash underscore LED dot n count. And that gives you the number of times your timer has been reached, okay? Then you've got n started, which is the, the very first time that you started it. Then you've got the last started, which is the very last time that the timer started. I hope that makes sense. But in any case, I think for the vast majority of people, just creating a timer instance like this and then determine if it's reached and allow that to do all of the resetting for you, that in itself is all you need. All this other good stuff it gives you a bit of flexibility in certain instances in your code. Okay, and that's basically it. So as I said, that's the most used function that I use, but the most simple. So I hope you find that of use. That is PKAE underscore timer library. If you do find it of use or you've got any questions, then please leave comments below and I will try and answer all of them if I can. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, then please click the like button. And if you haven't yet done so, please click subscribe too. It does help the channel. Okay, catch you later.